I'm John B. Cannon, and in this video we're going to explore one of Logic's hidden gems. These days there are so many third-party plugins that we can buy, synthesizers, effects, all that kind of stuff, that it's really easy to overlook the range of software instruments that exist within Logic, and we're going to look at one of those today, the EFM1, which is a rather curious little synthesizer which uses what we refer to as frequency modulation. Now, if you know your synth history, you'll know that Yamaha's absolutely seminal DX7 synthesizer used really similar technology. This idea that what we can do isn't to build sounds using the sort of traditional subtractive synthesis blocks that we see in synths like RetroSynth or maybe the ES2, but instead what we do is to take two separate uh, harmonic footprints and combine the two, use one to modulate the other. And what this can do, what this instrument is brilliant for, is creating this really kind of series of clangorous overtones, great for bell sounds, super metallic sort of tones. But because it also has a really interesting relationship with the kind of stereo field, we're gonna discover that we've got this really interesting synthesizer that is capable of doing all kinds of things actually, including the totally bonkers. So let's have a look at what we've got and begin to understand how this instrument works. So for frequency modulation synthesis, we need two separate sound sources, one of which is called the modulator and one of which is called the carrier. Let's deal with this one first. This is effectively a sine wave. Over here on the left-hand side, we've got a sine wave, which is never the world's most interesting sound by itself. But when we're in a position to modulate the frequency of that sine wave, which is what the modulator is for, we can produce all kinds of interesting sounds. So what I'm gonna do is to leave the harmonic here, the carrier harmonic over here at zero. And what I'm also going to do is to turn this harmonic down to um, its lowest setting as well. Now, what you can see around the interface is that we've got various controls, including the capability to modulate via an envelope. What I'm gonna to do to start with is to turn that off, all the way off, so that effectively we're hearing the most basic version of this sound, which is the most basic sine wave harmonic, which is being modulated by the most basic modulation source, if you like. That sounds like this. Okay, so we've got this incredibly small, thin little sound. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the volume envelope to have a really sharp attack and a full sustain level. And let's try that again. Okay, so now let's just start to experiment a little bit with what happens when we scroll up through the harmonic series for this sound. Okay, so what we're hearing there is the sine wave and the different harmonic that we're scrolling through every time we push the harmonic dial up one more notch. But again, we're not actually modulating the sound yet, which is why each of these different harmonics sounds like an absolutely pure sine wave so far. Okay, so let's choose a setting that isn't zero. We'll go with number one. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn up the harmonic amount over here for the modulator. Now, in theory, what this is going to do is to start modulating this sine wave by feeding its signal into the sine wave over here in the carrier section. But is that gonna work? Very subtly. How do we control the amount of that? Well, that's done by the frequency modulation dial here in the middle. The more I turn this up, the more the signal from the modulator is going to affect the carrier. Okay, and now we're starting to get some of those metallic tones that I talked about. Okay, so what we've then got is the opportunity to create different types of envelope. We've already seen that there's a volume envelope and we've seen how that affects the sound. Like in any other synthesizer, I've got attack, decay, sustain, and release. But I've also got a modulation envelope. So this FM movement, I can actually modulate using an envelope as well. To do that, I can either set a positive or a negative amount. 
And what I've then got is controls again, attack, decay, sustain, and release to control the behavior of the FM dial over time. Is it gonna happen straight away or is it going to fade in using this attack stage? And you can hear what happens there when it gets to the end of the attack and it goes through the decay and the sustain stages. And again, we could add some release as well. Okay, and we can hear that metallic sound changing again as it goes through the release phase. But we've also got other ways of changing the way that um, this frequency modulation can work. We've got an LFO stage. Now this allows me to introduce a low frequency oscillator in two different ways. I can either add vibrato, which is when we take a low frequency oscillator and we pass it through the pitch section of the sound. And what that's gonna do is to make the pitch of the sound undulate. And I've got a rate control for that as well, so I can determine how fast that's going to happen. I'm just going to change the envelope shape here so we get a fixed amount of um, sort of FM modulation. So there's our pitch change, but what we can also do is to stop working with vibrato and instead use the LFO to control the FM amount, which is over here. Okay, so I said at the top of the video that actually one thing the FM, the EFM1 is great for is kind of this kind of super stereo kind of effect. And there are a couple of ways that we can achieve that. First of all, it's got unison mode, which is really interesting. So there's the same sound without unison and with. Let's take out some of this modulation so we can hear that more clearly. And in addition to that, we've also got stereo detune. Okay, so the amazingly sharp piercing sounds. And of course, the FM1 is much more capable than just producing these sorts of sounds. But nevertheless, we get this amazing sort of quality of tone, which is quite bell-like in a way. Um, in a way that it's actually almost impossible really with um, sort of traditional or more traditional synthesis um, approaches. Now, if what we've been through doesn't really make sense or if you're sort of wondering what else you could use the EFM-1 for, obviously not only is there a, um, a sort of comprehensive uh, sort of set of um, presets which you can go through um, simply by clicking the usual place up here where it says factory default and going through the different um, options, but also one really interesting thing is that there's a randomized feature. Now this features in a few of Logic Synths. What we have a chance to do is to sort of pick this arbitrary percentage amount and then press the randomize button. And what this means is that across a range of either very small amounts of randomization from whatever your current settings are or much more dramatic ones, I've gone up to 50%, um, whenever I click the random button, effectively the parameter sets will move to produce a new sound. Hmm, lots of fun. Okay, now if you're an Amon Tobin fan, this is the synth for you. It's great for creating these super wide, really quite filthy noises, which combine really nicely with other things. Of course, you just play some notes in, convert them into audio, or of course, we haven't even got started with adding saturation or distortion or reverb, bouncing things down, chopping them up, 
all the usual techniques apply, but in terms of a sort of core instrument that's capable of a bunch of sounds that are very different from Logic's other synthesizers, I really think this is a bit of a hidden gem. So as we've seen within this video, the EFM1 is right there and ready to play with. And whether or not you understand frequency modulation or whether or not you just want to start with the randomized feature and begin to see what comes out the other end, there's a really instrument, uh, a sort of interesting instrument here, which I think could hugely enhance your productions.